every crew has come out to the edge of pit lane. It's for Richard Childers and all the guys. Everybody worked so hard for this. The Daytona 500 is ours. We've won it. We've won it. We've won it. And there's the Harley J. Earl Trophy claimed, as you just heard, in 1998 by Dale Earnhardt. I might be speaking on emotion here, but I think it's one of the top five days in the history of NASCAR. And the man who called Dale home back in 98, Mike Joy, is with us now. It's great that Mike is here to be a part of such a, a special occasion. Certainly, and a part of such a special event. I think... Me personally, when I think back on that race, the, the moment that sticks out to me, Mike, is, is Dale coming down and, and all of those crew members lined up and, and congratulating him. I want to know for all three of you, what is the biggest memory that sticks in your mind from that event? Well, I get chills every time I hear that call, too. You know, it was, it was a big moment. And usually the network will go to break right after the checkered flag and a couple of burnouts, and then we'll go to break, we'll come back for victory lane. Jim Cornell was a CBS associate director and he told Lance Barrow, the producer, he says, something's happening here. Don't go to break. And it was that big receiving line of everybody on pit road lining up to congratulate Dale because finally the curse of the 500 had been broken and he'd finally won it. Um, there were only three lap numbers in the Daytona 500 he had not led. There were two laps in the 90s and, of course, lap 200. And we had that covered eight ways to Sunday. Mm -hmm. And when it finally happened, uh, we were excited, we were relieved, and uh, just wanted to go join the celebration. Yeah, I guess the whole day was a, a blur. You know, we had to make a decision after final practice on Saturday to change the engine on Sunday morning because we had a little bit of an issue at the beginning of happy hour. So it had been a long day, but it, it was obvious to me not long after that race started that the only team that could beat us is if we just beat ourselves. The car was that good. We obviously knew Dale Earnhardt's ability when it came to racing anywhere, but especially Daytona and Talladega. And of course, that was back when we used to race back to the caution. And the, the accident happened on the back straightaway coming to the white flag, and they took the white flag and the caution, which meant the race was officially over, but we still had to run that next lap. We had to maintain pace car speed back around the checkered flag. I think that lap probably was as fast as any other lap that Dale had run all day long. The back stretch was clear. He was going to make sure that three car got back to that checkered flag. What about you, Richard? What, what is the w biggest memory that sticks out from that day? Well, I've got so many. You know, I knew how important that race was for Dale to win. We'd won a Daytona 499 several times. and uh, But to see him win it and see the emotion after that race and see the look on his face, I'll never forget. And I think just the people on pit road, I remember Larry Mack leaning over to me with about five to go. We were leading. He said, well, what do you think? I said, well, Larry Mack, I've been here before. Yeah. You know? So we, we pulled it off, and, and, and Dale won the race. And uh, it, it will stand out as one of the top. I get asked a lot, what's the greatest win in your 50 years? And I have to go and say the one with Dale Earnhardt. But I, then I got to come right back and say the one with my grandson when Austin Dillon won it because nothing is thicker than blood. <laughs>